We covenant to be eager for ministry to go in a new direction, to embody God's unconditional love for all people, to grow spiritually through prayer, Bible study, mutual support and caring, and participation in our church's outreach ministries, to worship God in spirit and in truth, to welcome extravagantly, to ask in faith, believing it will happen, to be on the road to tithing our time, talent, and treasures, to build our temples to God in mind, body, and spirit, to be at peace with one another and speak no ill of anyone, to strive to be in one accord with the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ, to think it in our heads, believe it in our hearts, and definitely do it with our hands, to be at the heart of the community with the community at its heart. the sky, the sea, maker of all above and below. Your love is in the sunshine's glow. Your life is in the quickening air. We give you thanks. Your name we sing, almighty God our heavenly King. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear God, every evening as the sun sets, we feel the calm that you alone can bring. And as the night marches in, we see the moon and stars that you have made. When morning breaks in power, we hear your words once again, let there be light. And another day begins, a day made by you, how can we ever thank you enough? Over the past few weeks, we have seen extremes of weather, huge storms that covered our entire state and caused damage from lightning, wind, hail, and heavy rain. At times like that, we realize how fragile we are and how much we need you. And there have been storms in our lives too, God. 
times when it seems as if, seems as if our world is turning upside down. Sometimes our only comfort is knowing that you are there, bringing peace in the midst of the storm, saying to the waves, peace, be still. We gather today as a church family. No one is here by accident, God. You called each one to be in this place. Wherever we gathered in your name, you promised to be among us. You take our limited words and thoughts and turn them into something holy. You take our donations of money and turn them into something much more. You take our lives and make us more like you. You are the creator and you continue to create amazing things out of nothing. Bless this gathering of your people and hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20, which can be found on the Pew Bible on page 1025. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. That ends the scripture. Ready, go. Mm -hmm. I set out on a narrow way Many years ago Hoping I would find true love Along the broken road But I got lost a time or two I wiped my brow, kept pushing through I couldn't see how every sign pointed straight to you. Cause every long lost dream led me to where you are. Others who broke my heart, they were just northern stars pointing me on my way. Into your loving arms This much I know is true That God blessed the broken road And led me straight to you I think about the years I've spent Just passing through I'd like to take the time I lost and give it back to you. But you just smiled and take my hand. You've been there, you understand. It's all part of your grander plan that is coming true. Cause every long lost dream led me to where you are. Others who broke my heart, they were just northern stars pointing me on my way into your loving arms. This much I know, I know it's true. That God blessed the broken road And led me straight to you And now I'm just running home Into your loving arms 
This much I know is true That God blessed the broken road And led me straight to you That God blessed the broken road And led me straight to you Matter of fact, turn to each other and just say, you know, you are a blessing. Well, that was half-hearted. Let's do it one more time. Turn to each other and say, you are a blessing. There you go. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for these next moments. These next moments where we will just forget everything that we brought into the church and we're just going to be open to hearing from you. We ask that anything that's a burden, anything that's stopping us from making sure that we leave this place knowing that we've heard a specific message for each and every one of us, let it happen and we know it to be so. So we claim now in the precious name of Jesus, and it is so, amen. Doing a series on optimum living. You know, I'm just tired of people just living. You've got to live optimally. There's something special about being a Christian. There's no other, please forgive me, and I'm, not, I'm sitting in judgment now, and I don't like to sit in judgment, but this is the Christ-centered religion that allows us to know that, yes, we have eternal life. We need to live optimally. We need to not just day by day and whatever life comes, let it happen. No, let's live optimally. Let's live life to the fullest. This was Jesus' plan. Jesus' plan was that we have life and have it more what? That word begins with A, abundantly. God is able, and we have to get to a point where we recognize the importance of living optimally. And one of the factors that I want to make sure we know that we must know we are blessed. And I mean know we are blessed. Not think we are blessed or maybe we're blessed, but know we are blessed. Repeat after me, I know. I am blessed. And the secret to this sermon is I know I am blessed all the time, at all times. Wow, that's so difficult. But then I look at the Bible, I look at all the stories, I look at what everybody's going through in the Bible and all the difficulties and everything. But the key factor is that we know that everything that we've gone through, all the stories in the Bible, we know that all the stories have a good outcome. Whatever we're going through, we will be blessed, and we must know and we must live like we are blessed. We must expect blessings. There was a wise person that once said, as a man or woman thinketh, so he is, so she is. As you think, so you are. If you think that life is a big burden, guess what? It's a big burden. If you think life is unfair, guess what? Life is what? It's unfair. If you think life is hard, guess what it is? You have to change your thoughts. You've got to be able to take on, as the Bible says, this mind of Christ. No matter what happens, you must know you are blessed because God will supply all of our needs. Think about that. Not all of our wants, but all of our needs, God will supply. But one of the keys, one of the keys of these divine principles is that we must live to be able to know that our prayers for prosperity have to be for others, not just ourselves. Christianity is not a selfish religion. It's religion of giving. And we want to wish for our brothers and our sisters the very best that life has to offer. Don't answer me, and I don't want you to hear, but you need to think about this. Have you prayed for prosperity for someone else other than yourself? Have you ever thought about something that somebody else needs this blessing? Are these always these selfish prayers? When you know you are blessed, you must know that your prayers are powerful and that you need to pray for one another, for someone else. It's so critical. It's so very important to do this. So I just want you to know, the last time I heard somebody won all these millions of dollars 
After that first thought went by with doggone it, it wasn't me. The second thought was, you know something? I'm thankful for the winner. I'm thankful. And then I had to put my little judgment thing. Well, I hope they do right with the money. That's selfishness. The bottom line is we must rejoice in the prosperity of one another, to lift in our prayers one another, that we have a right to abundance. Because the scripture says it's not that God may supply all our needs. God shall supply all our needs. He shall supply all our needs. And we must live that way. We must know we are blessed at all times, no matter what happens, we must know we are blessed. But let me say this to you again clearly. Again, we must want for our other. We want for another, not for ourselves. So let me go back and tell you this one real quick story. Have you ever gotten to a point where you, and I have to say this to you right now, have you ever gone to hospitals and visited people? And sometimes you walk in there, you be like, oh boy, I don't know what I'm getting ready to walk into now. Because the person may have a bad attitude or person got so caught up in this, whatever they're going through, they, they just lose hope and everything. But you know something, and I mention this to you real quick, if you know that God has supplied your needs yesterday, the day before, why do you think in your most difficult situation God won't supply that? Because your needs can also be your health needs. I don't care how much money you have, if you don't have health, you have what? Zipola. And I've never forgotten that. We must be able to practice, even in our darkest moments, we must know we are blessed. Repeat after me, I know I am blessed. And for optimum living, this is something that I struggle with. For optimum living, we must make sure that we be still and know that God is God. That God is still speaking. We're good for that in United Church of Christ. God is still speaking. But you know, so many times we use this mouth so much, we're all the time talking. And please forgive me, we're all the time praying, asking God for something. Sometimes you just need to be still, close your mouth, and hear from God. Amen? I mean that to be still and know that God is God, whatever it is in your circumstance. When something bad happens, the first thing in your mind should be, God, I know you have already worked it out for me. First thought, God, wherever it is, I know you have worked it out for me. God, whatever this is, I know it's going to be for my best. I know I'm going to live optimally because of this. You must know it, but you need to be still and know. It's so difficult. Do you know one of the worst things can happen is silence? Gee, when's he going to speak? Have you ever watched TV and all of a sudden the TV goes off and there's silence and you go, uh-oh. We've got to be able to embrace the silence, to be able to have those quiet moments that we know that God is going to work it out. You know, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get in the car and one of the first things I do is do what? After the car starts, amen, hallelujah. But after the car starts, then do what? Turn the radio on. Turn the radio off. Listen to what God is telling you. Spend those moments with God. Pay attention now. But spend those moments with God. Get into the habit of being still and to know. One of the most important things that you can do in the morning is be still and not just plan out the day, but be still and listen to God because God's got a blessing in store for you. Be still and know. It doesn't say just be still, but it says be still and what? Know. You must know. You must know. We must know. In every situation, be still and know. So I told you this real quick, and I'll tell you this story again. I told this a few years ago. I had gotten to the point of seeing all the positive benefits of meditation. 
Oh, it's, it's, it's so many, the list just goes on and on. If you meditate, your health improves. It lowers your, uh, your blood rate, the, the, whatever that thing is, the pulse rate. It, lowers, it helps the blood pressure. It, meditation does all these great things. So I went ahead and paid $35 to try C and took a meditation course because I knew it was important for me to, to be able to learn how to meditate. And I want you to know for that $35 for that entire hour, what I did was I took a nap each time. I'm paying this guy to fall asleep on the floor. This is ridiculous. But I could not grasp that concept of meditation, of being still. So, because my mind is going 24 hours a day, 24 7, it's moving, thinking, thinking, doing stuff, and it's hard to quiet your mind. So, my mind goes from off to on. So, I'm 35 hours just blown away. I said, wait a minute, I'm going to get this right. Whatever it is, I'm going to learn the importance of meditation. I'm going to understand what the psalmist was saying about be still in the know. And I'm going to be determined to meditate. So, I just concentrated. I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to hear from God. You've got to relax. You've got to keep practicing till you're able to be still. Your prayers need to be silent. Sometimes, you know what stops our prayers from being answered? Ourselves. And you know what one of the biggest things that stops us from being still and to know is this great big word called worry. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not a worry wart. If you worry, you can't be still and do what? No. You've got to release it. And the next principle of divine, you've got to let go and let God. Repeat after me, I will. Let go and let God. It's not in the Bible. Let go, let God is not in the Bible. But it's one of the strongest spiritual principles that we have to let go and let God. Sometimes we don't have to react to something. Sometimes you just need to sit back, relax, and let it unfold because if it unfolds, it will unfold to our good. But we can't be in charge of it. We can't be in control. And there's so many people, nobody here at this church wants to be in charge and in control. There's no issues here of ownership or control in this church. Of course not. But what it is, we have to make sure that we make sure, we make sure, we make sure, we make sure that we practice letting go and letting who? God. Oh, how difficult that is to let God be God. Oh, no, I can fix this. You know, I'm having this difficulty. Oh, I can fix this. Your name is not Mrs. Fix-It. Your name is not Mr. Fix-It. That's God's name. God will fix it, but we have to let go and let God be God. No matter what's happening in your life, you've got to be able to let go. God is waiting there with arms wide open to bless you. It is my privilege of letting you know this. God will not fail you nor forsake you. We've been preaching that over and over. God will not fail us or forsake us. Therefore, let go and let God. Whatever it is, let go and let God. Let God know what's the outcome in. God will be able to fix it. If God supplies our needs, if we are be still in no, we got to be able to let go and let God. So let me tell you this story. Here's a story about this man named Jesus. It's hard for me to realize that Jesus himself had to do what? Let go and let God. For every time Jesus came up, and he was with somebody, everybody did want something. I need to be healed, I need more money, I need you to fix this, I need you to this. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me, why did Jesus get into the boat to go in the middle of the lake? Because he wanted to do what? Let go and let God. He wanted to let go and let God. He wanted to realize the importance of quiet time, the importance of being away, the importance of, I told you my phrase that I love was Zsa Zsa Gabor, I want to be alone. You've got to be able to realize the importance of letting go. God will fix it. Has God ever failed you or forsaken you? He's not going to start now. So let me do this last thing. If God will supply our needs, if we practice being still and knowing, and we let go and let God, 
then why is it that we do what? Worry. Stop worrying this day. One of the keys that someone taught me, and it was a little child, a little child will teach you as well as a senior. A little child will come up and said to me, you know, my brother, he's in the Boy Scouts. And I don't understand, Reverend, this thing you call a, a, a worry wart. And he said, you get all tied up in knots? Well, they don't teach you that in Boy Scouts, do they? They don't teach that knot, do they? So why are you telling us not to do that? Because I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know, because I'm still worrying. You and I live optimally. Be happy. Enjoy life. Live life to the fullest. And what is it? God will supply our needs. Be still and know. And know when to let go and let God. And when is the best time to let go and let God? Every time. So, raise your hands if you want to live optimally. Thank God you can raise your hand, amen, because there's somebody that can't do that. Amen? Amen.
Before we have our closing hymn, I want everyone to please repeat after me. Val, we love you. We know this can't be an easy time for Rick and Beth, but we want you to know that we know that God is going to bless her and her and Dante and the child to be and that all is well. We claim it, we know it to be so, amen? So Val, you know that you will be going with love and you know that you'll be going in our prayers. Please let us uh, sing our closing hymn, Be Still and Know. Let us hold hands. Dear God, that we all know that you have been able to help us to see what it means to live optimally. We will do the very best we can to know that no matter what happens, that you will supply all of our needs that you will help us to be still and to know. And you will help us to know that the right time to let go and to let you is right now. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, whatever may be, we will let go and let you. We will live life to the fullest. We will enjoy life. We will be able to celebrate, to know that no matter what happens, you won't fail us nor forsake us and all is well. So those who agree with this will say together,